Welcome back to Mastaro, where today we are converting the last of the 5th edition adventures published by Wizards of the Coast in a Mastara-friendly version. This week we are going back to the very beginning of 5th edition with Lost Minds of Fandelver, and then it's on to the sister product, Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Then, after this, back to the Mastara Deep Delve videos, I promise. I'm Mr. Welch, and let's look at why bigger always isn't better. Both of these adventures come from the seemingly lost medium of the boxed set with mines coming from the very first 5th edition product, the D&D starter set. The Dragons of Ice Spire Peak came from the Essentials Kit, released a few years later. Both of these were steals for what you got. They got a 64-page adventure, character sheets, full set of play dice, more importantly, and some other uh, player aids. It's well worth the price of admission for both of them. I'm not covering the other box sets. While I find Rick and Morty funny on occasion, the crossover really didn't do anything for me. And the Stranger Things box set, while including a pair of Demigorgon miniatures and a basic adventure, did not include even one single picture of sweet, lovely, doughy-eyed Winona. The only reason we even watch Stranger Things. But enough about the embarrassing lack of Winona in D&D products, let's get to the conversion. First up, Lost Minds. It's considered one of the best adventures written for 5th edition. It's tightly written, it keeps the party moving forward while not railroading them. It gives them enough variety and monsters so it's not just wash, rinse, and repeat. To start, we have to place it in Mastara, but the town of Fandolin isn't much of a town as it's a small village of only a thousand people. I say small because the obvious replacement would be Threshold, but that's 5,000 people. Penhaligon is 4,000, and that was the next obvious. If you're going to place this in Karamikos, the closest town in population and similar geographic features is Verge, which is just south of Threshold. So practice your Serbian accents, everybody. There's five parts to Lost Mines, with the first part being a classic goblin cave that can be put pretty much anywhere in a setting with goblins. It's a straightforward prisoner rescue, doesn't need any conversions at all. Everything is just goblins and a bugbear, so there's nothing to replace. This is a starter level module. Part 1 has the gloves on for a reason. To be fair, if the party is all new players and have never played before, the goblin ambush can be quite deadly, so remember that part. Just like Castle Caldwell, this is meant to teach new players, not traumatize them. Veteran players might steamroll this part because they know the tactics, but remember this wasn't written for them in mind. The second part of the module is the town of Fandolin, where the players get to restock, heal up, not like that's difficult in 5th edition, and practice the social aspects of D&D, where you have to talk to people to get information rather than beat it out of them. At least I hope they do the talk part instead of the torture part. There's not much to change in part 2, strip out the annoying factions from this small town and just give out the quests normally. Okay, going off on a tangent, I think the factions in 5th edition have been really overused, and that might be the reason why everything in 5th edition, module-wise at least, is the Sword Coast. You've got five factions that were primarily used for the Adventurers League that appear in almost every module so far, but they're regionally based. The Lord's Alliance isn't going to have any pull in Thay or Mulholland or Unther on the other side of the map. It would be like visiting Grants Fall, Oregon, and constantly meeting members of the New York Firefighters Union. Faerun is a massive setting that spans thousands of miles, and the Forgotten Realms players are only allowed books set in an area the size of California. I've been coming to realize that that's one of the biggest problems with Forgotten Realms. Even the people that love Faerun around here have been complaining that they are sick of the Sword Coast. Move on to the Moon Sea or someplace different. Granted, when D&D video games first came out, it was all about the Dale Lands and Cormir, so I guess that's always been a problem with certain areas getting all the attention. But back to the review. One of the quests you get from Fandolin is a simple kill em all dungeon quest. There's human bandits for the most part, so nothing to change here. There is a Nothic, and if you want a Mastaran creature, you need to find a cave dwelling nasty to replace it with. For a real twist, throw a snapper at them. Similar hit points, you lose the magic part of the monster, but you replace it with pure tanky goodness. Everybody thinks, what's a turtle doing here? Then suddenly the turtle opens its snapping turtle mouth, and everybody realizes this isn't the friendly kind of turtle man. After you take care of the dungeon, it's time to head overland to face new threats. It's mostly just regular D&D &D monsters, with the parties walking from one encounter to the next. They will make it to an abandoned castle in Cragmar Castle, but that doesn't really need a location because it's the size of a manor house rather than an actual large castle. There's a Grick inside that you can turn into a Mastaro worm easily enough if you are so inclined. Then you get the party to face their first owlbear. Remember to give bonus experience to the player that tries to saddle break it, and then stare at them disappointed if they just flat out kill it. The last part of the module is another kill em all dungeon, with only a single drow needing to be replaced. Any evil elf will do, it doesn't even have to be an exotic race. A Belkadis bandit will work in a jiffy. The rest of the module is basic monsters, nothing out of the ordinary. Kill the bad guys, get the treasure, level up, the end. 
The module is 64 pages, same size as the early Gazetteers, and it stands up to the older modules. It's well written, the encounters tend to be balanced, and it's a good starter for both a beginning DM and players. I do wish 5th edition would include monster stat blocks with the encounters, like the modules of old, rather than requiring you to keep another part of the book or the monster manual bookmarked, or have to buy the monster cards from Gale Force 9. That's a personal preference that everybody else should share. If Wizards would make smaller modules like this instead of the huge $50 campaigns that they tend to release, that would be fantastic, because this module blows away most of their hardback adventures. More stabbing, less explaining. Moving on to Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. This is a compilation meant to be played one adventure at a time rather than overarching storyline. You can't actually play all of them, because once you finish enough of the encounters at a certain level, it locks out the other adventures at that level. This lets you replay it without repeating a lot of the adventures. As it's just a compilation, most of these adventures are little more than encounters than actual adventures. I'll just go over the changes needed and skip the ones that can be played with little changes. The module is set in Fandolin again, so we're going back to Verge. You've had plenty of time to practice your Serbian accent, so that's not going to be a problem. There's 14 different encounters that are anywhere from 1 to 4 pages in length on average. Though they're introduced in alphabetical order rather than in escalating difficulty, and that was something that bugged me. But, starting in alphabetical order, let's go down the list. Axe Home is the first one. It's your standard kill em all dungeon with basic monsters you can put anywhere. Just have the party run across it when you need a filler dungeon for an evening. Butter Skull Ranch is a two-page encounter that's pretty much just a single combat encounter. Kill the orcs and the rest of the buildings is empty except for the guy you were sent to rescue. This can be slotted in anywhere, even as a random encounter in another module. The third encounter is another short one with Circle of Thunder. You'll need to replace the evil cleric of Talos with something Mistara related. An Entropic Immortal or an Evil Energy Immortal will work. The Big Bad is an actual animal spirit, so if you've got a player running a spirit shaman, this is their time to shine. Dragon Barrow is another short encounter. It's just two pages. Not all the encounters are two pages, but a lot of them are. This is another wandering monster style encounter. Nothing fancy, just kill some monsters to score some sweet treasure. Attach this to any adventure that's dragging in the combat department. Another two-page encounter is Dwarven Excavation, a very short dungeon with some traps and, of course, orcs. If you need a short adventure because you had to work late on your adventure planning night, then send them into this dungeon so they can kill the bad guys and take the treasure. Nothing fancy here. Falcon's Hunting Lodge is meant to introduce the players to a friendly NPC that gives them plot information. There's no combat in this encounter, just get the information and leave. Ignoring all that, there's a nice map of the Hunting Lodge that you should steal for further use. If the party saves some random noble later, give them the Hunting Lodge as a reward and a base of operations. Make the campaign personal by giving the party something they can call home. Don't have to be murder hobos now that they have something to protect. Nomengard is one of the largest adventures in the book, coming in at a whopping four pages. Ignore the wild magic part of the adventure. Wild magic is a Faerun problem. Mastaran magic is far more stable. It's predictable and superior in all aspects. It's a straight-up dungeon crawl that, since we're in Karamikos, you can set near High Forge for maximum gnomelicious adventures. Ice Spire Hold is the final adventure in the book, at least chronologically, where you get to kill your way through an isolated castle to fight the titular dragon. Replace the mention of Timora with Raven or Taiki, then set the, the party loose and watch them kill on Moss. They are 5th level at this point, and the wizard is just itching to try out the new fireball spell that was just acquired. Verge is south of the Black Peak Mountain, so there's plenty of spots to put this castle. Then you have to find out a way to take the castle away from the PCs, because it's a very nice castle that's going to be short on owner a few fireball spells later. But that's your problem to figure out. After dealing with a dragon, it's time to get back to boring stuff, because you're going to send the party to the loggers camp encounter. There's an evil druid the party's actually not going to likely be encountering, and a whole bunch of Ankhegs in this short encounter. Ankhegs aren't Beckme related, but they were mentioned in 2nd edition briefly during that uh, time period. So if you want to keep Ankhegs in Mastara, that's not a problem. But if you're doing this as Beckme, and you want to keep with the traditional Mastaran monsters, uh, go for the old standbys of Megafauna. Hyena Dons or Fororaikos, which is the giant terror birds are similar in challenge rating to an Ankeg, and since the party is near the Lost Valley of the Hutakans, why not? Mountain Toe Goldmine is a rat-themed kill em all two-page uh, dungeon. It's a one-shot and one-nighter for the party that you can squeeze in anywhere, simple enough. Shrine of Savros is another short kill em all with some orcs. The Mastar and equivalent of the, to the Faerun God of Fate would be Skald or Taiki, for those wondering. The rest of the module is just you stabbing orcs, so it can go anywhere on the map. 
The Tower of Storms is a three-page encounter that doesn't need much changing other than the evil god of storms is replaced by an insane cleric of Odin or a similar vil uh, villain. Other than the unique villain, there's nothing much to convert in this adventure. Umbridge Hill is a one-page encounter where the party gets jumped by a manticore. That's it. Kill the monster and you can reach the merchant and buy all the cool stuff. It's not much of an encounter, but I guess they had a page to kill. Making page count is a thing in designing these modules. I'm not faulting them for the brevity of this one. Sometimes you gotta pad because the books have a specific number of pages for the printer to uh, work properly. That's why books like this always have their total pages divisible by eight. And I have talked way too long about an encounter with a single monster. Last encounter is the Woodland Manor. It's four pages, a lot of druids, and a nice follow-up encounter if you drive away the bad guys. Again, the party is left in possession of a nice house once the bad guys are disposed of. It's up to you decide whether they get to keep it or not. After looking at both of these box sets, it's easy to see why Lost Minds is considered the far superior of the two. And that's because it has a coherent plot rather than just a bunch of encounters that read like an issue of Dungeon Magazine. There's nothing wrong with Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. You get your money's worth and then some. But it's more like a DM's aid rather than an actual adventure. Cleric gets stuck with babysitting and you have to run an adventure shorthanded. Throw the rest of the party into a, sh a quick dungeon with some orcs and that's already written for you. Books like this have their place. They aren't meant to be full adventures, but more like emergency encounters that you don't have to worry about taking the time to make it your own. Plus the rest of the stuff you get for your 20 bucks is outstanding. That's it. No more 5th edition adventures until, well, they release the next one. Back to purely Mastar and stuff. Looking at the last thing on my list before my internet uh, got cut and I had to switch to conversions was making high-level Mastara modules interesting. And that's what I'm going to go back to next week. So get ready for Power Struggles, Interplanar Adventure, and Immortality. The stuff high-level play thrives on. So until next week, remember, if you teach your kids how to play early, then you can just take them with you rather than being stuck with babysitting.